coming up on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. We celebrate another exciting year in Phoenix athletics. And take note of a few record-breaking performances along the way. We'll also return to Rhodes Stadium to see what lies ahead for Phoenix football in 2014. All that and more next on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. Welcome back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly. It's been an unforgettable year for all Elon teams, whether on the field, court, or the track. As athletes finish their time in the Southern Conference, many also inscribe their names into the Elon history books forever. And this year, no one broke re records quite like the men's basketball team. The core four of the team are graduating, but the stats each accumulated during their careers make them four of the best players to ever wear the maroon and gold. The 2013-2014 season for the men's basketball team was a record-setting year for several different players. Senior guard Jack Eisenbarger stapled his name in the Elon record books by becoming the all-time leader in three-pointers made with 264. Not far behind Eisenbarger on the three-pointers list is fellow senior Sebastian Koch, who accumulated 242 buckets from downtown over his four years at Elon. The six-foot eight guard also finished third in threes made third and threes attempted, and second in percentage from behind the arc. Also in the record books for his three-pointers made is guard Tanner Sampson. After only two seasons, the sophomore is already ninth on the three-pointers list and third in three-point percentage. Elon set more records other than those of the three-point variety. Jack Eisenbarger finished second in free throw percentage at 84%, as well as ninth on the assist list with 290. Possibly the most decorated senior is forward Lucas Troutman. Troutman made the most of his career at Elon, becoming the all-time leader in blocks with 213, 71 more than any Phoenix ever. Troutman also finished 9th on the all-time points list, as well as 8th all-time with 353 free throws made. Although the Phoenix have 5 seniors graduating, next year's team will be left in good hands with sharpshooting Tanner Sampson and point guard Austin Hamilton. Both of these players will be guys that Coach Matheny will count on in the 2014-2015 season. This Elon team has also accomplished an amazing feat, becoming only one of two teams in all of college basketball with four 1,000-point scorers on their roster. The four players were all seniors, Sebastian Koch, Riley Beaumont, Lucas Troutman, and Jack Eisenbarger. The legacy of Riley, Sebastian, Lucas, and Jack will certainly not be forgotten anytime soon. Since taking over as Elon's head women's distance coach five years ago, Christine Engel has transformed the program. That constant push and drive has led many of her runners to break personal and school records, and now has led two runners to the West Coast for one of the most decorated track meets of the season. The Stanford Invitational is one of the most prestigious uh, track and field meets of the year. It was a great moment when coach told me because like it was like one of my, one of my dreams to go and race at Stanford. We were thrilled when we heard that we got the chance to run there and it was definitely like a life-changing experience. For the first time in Elon track history, Allison Orman, Teresa Novotna were invited to compete in the Stanford Invitational. The two close friends made the trip to the West Coast for the first time in their lives. Our women's team is, is very close in general, and um, you know to have both of them there definitely probably calmed their nerves a little bit. They didn't have to hang out with me uh, solely the whole time. I was so happy Ali went with me because like we are really good friends, so if you have someone to talk to and just have fun with, so I mean, if she wasn't there, I don't know what I would do without her. It was a special experience. Um, Teresa is one of my best friends, so it was great to spend time, our first time in the West Coast together. The Stanford Invitational has one of the most intense atmospheres in Division One track, an atmosphere that both Elon runners thrived in. 
Teresa, her race was first, uh, 3K steeplechase, and it was an eight second PR uh, school record as well. Anytime you go out and PR, that's, um, you know, that's a great thing. I was pleased with my performance. It was my PR, but I could have run a little better. It's always there, but it's not the end of the season, so we can hope for better. And Allie, you know, I joke, she's an animal. <laughs> um, she ran such a tough race, uh, really, really a gutsy performance. Just, we had great, a great performance. We both broke the school record. So that extra confidence in racing girls at, who run at a high level definitely help us going into conference and being ready to run our best. Two best friends with their coach in California doing what they love. That made for a memory of a lifetime to have Teresa and Allie uh, be accepted into the meet was definitely an honor for them and, and really shows the elevation of our program and our distance program. It was just a great trip with like my favorite people. It's all like the fun times we had. We laughed a lot and we got to know each other better. So it, this um, race was probably the highlight of my career at Elon. The Phoenix will compete in the Southern Conference Outdoor Championships in Spartanburg, South Carolina on April 26th and 27th. And that brings us to today's trivia. Which athletic conference did Elon become a charter member of in 1930? The answer coming up later in the show. It's time for our first commercial break, but first, let's take a look at some upcoming games for Phoenix baseball and softball. When we return, we'll see how the football team is shaping up as we finish our inside look at spring practice. An Elon education is about preparing students for a life of global citizenship. Of course, this is a place where you're going to come and earn a degree, but it's also a place that's going to get you to think very deeply about how you're going to use that degree to make the world a better place. Through their daily pursuit of excellence, Elon student athletes have gained recognition for their achievements both on and off the field. Building a winning tradition takes hard work and dedication. Dedication to the maroon life. Where success is not only measured by just wins and trophies, <laughs> but also by the knowledge we gain. At Elon, we're more than just athletes. <laughs> We're student athletes. Providing support enables success. Help sustain the winning tradition of Elon Athletics while securing the future of our student athletes for years to come. And now back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on ESPN2. The Elon Phoenix Weekly is made possible by the students of the School of Communications in association with the dedicated coaches, athletes, and staff of Elon Athletics. The Elon football coaching staff has many new faces, including Coach Carlton Hall, who preaches both football and life after football, something that is often forgotten. Go again, fall step. That's all I want. My name is Carlton Hall. I am the defensive line coach here at Elon University. You, know, you preach.
preach to the kids, especially when you are recruiting these young men to go to a school like Elon or, or like Vanderbilt, that you know, you're only going to get so many chances to play football. At some point in time, someone is going to tell you that your football career is over. Go, cut. I have played football as long as I can remember. Uh, it's been very giving to me for a very long time. And I went to Vanderbilt and played linebacker there at Vanderbilt. Um, from there, I spent about 22 seconds um, in the NFL at San Diego Chargers. I went to NFL Europe, came back, and someone told me that my football career was over. Trying to pull on this handle, right? When, when football was over, I did not think about coaching. You know, some people, you know, even on the staff, will tell you that they wanted to be a coach for a very long time, and that was not me. When I moved to New York City, I got a job working um, literally on Wall Street first, and I hated it. Corporate America, you know, as much as they would like to say that they like uh, and show teamwork, it's still not the same teamwork that you find in an athletic atmosphere. Get inside, get inside. Uh, Columbia University in New York City, I was there. Um, I took a train uptown one day, tried to go meet with the, the head coach that had just got hired, and that's the day I met Rich Krosky. There you go. Alex is up on this side. You're the tackle, be the tight end goal on that side. Uh, be the guard right there, Pierce. This is not a four-year decision. This is a 40-year decision or 50-year decision that they're making. And when you come to Elon University, you are helping yourself infinitely down the road that most 17 and 18 year olds can't fully grasp or see. Some 38 year olds can't grasp that necessarily. Blue seven. <laughs> Being a defensive lineman in college or above this level um, is definitely a, the hardest physical job in football. You have to be able to run, uh, you have to be strong, um, but the mental toughness that it takes to play defensive line in college and like I said in the pros is I think is lost on most people. Down. There you go. There you go. Good, good. good. I want them to Im improve by cutting down any mental errors they have. If you could promise a coach or if a coach could promise his team that he's going to go into a game or that they are going to go into a game and not have any mental errors, you're going to win that game. Blue 30. Blue 30. Set, go. Your mind is going to tell you that need to, need to stop way faster than your body is going to tell you you need to stop. Your body is kind of stupid. Your mind is a smart part, right? Man, 30. The hard work that goes into this is not instant, but when you see a kid have success, when you look at the scoreboard and you see that you have won a game, um, you know, you are getting instantly gratified by all of the hard work that you put into this. And to me, that's, like you said to, to, to your original question, that's why you do this. Man. this is, that's why you do something, you know, and coach football and, and, and coach these kids. That's absolutely why. With enhancements on the D-line and life focus, the Phoenix look to improve on their two wins from last year as the team moves to the CAA. As a part of our continued look at the football team during their spring practices, we now get up close and personal with Coach Robluski's offensive line. As we continue our look at the different positions on the Phoenix football team, we turn our attention to Damien Robluski and the offensive line. The O-line has not only been working hard to get up to speed in the new system, but also to get to know one another and themselves. Coach Robluski shared his thoughts on the progress the offensive line is making in these early spring practices. When you look at the first scrimmage, you see a lot of people thinking. Um, you know, it's the first time they were in game situations and required to have those different schematics and plays come in and out different times. Um, and so it always takes a little bit of time, but once they settle into their groove, 
Um, I think they did a good job of understanding um, how to attack the people they had to attack. Coach Rabluski shared his thoughts on how the young players are adapting to the new system. Anytime you have young kids that are in a new system, then to some degree, before they can lead other people, they have to lead themselves. Still trying to find where they fit in, what's their stance like. Their stance is still new. It's a new stance from last year. You know, like anything else, it's new. But they're doing a solid job of understanding who they are. And uh, to me, leadership is influence. How do I influence other people? If they just understand that if I can influence them in a positive way, then I am leading. However, there are advantages to coaching younger players. Generally speaking, <clears throat> younger people are more open-minded than, than older people. And so uh, they're very open to what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, have they mastered it yet? No, I mean, it's only been a few weeks. And we're at the remedial stages. But as you watch the video, you can see evidence of them believing and trying and doing. At this point in the preseason, Coach Rabluski is stressing one simple message to his players. Get better at a few things rather than be bad at a lot of things. So um, there are people that, that will go out and say, hey, we're going to do a lot of different things. We're going to confuse people. Um, that confusion can also confuse your own players. And so when you're building a foundation uh, of fundamentals, of an attitude, of a culture, I think you don't want to dilute it with schematic things. An offensive system is simply an organized way to advance the football down the field and score points. Coach Rabluski briefly touched on the important aspects of the game that an offensive lineman must be aware of. There's a certain way you have to move. There's a certain way you have to carry your body. There's a certain speed that you have to move at. It's not always fast, it's not always slow, it's not always as fast as you possibly can, it's not always standing still. It's, you know, the game in, in any given play, their, your speed or your pace can change a couple times. And I think that the, the guys are starting to understand pace, not just, hey, the ball is snapped, go as fast as you possibly can or something. We have to block the right people, we have to block them the right way. At the same time, we have to block them at the right time. There's spatial awareness as well. You know, where do I fit in? Spatially, in other words, as I come around this block and I got to go block this guy, where do I fit in spatially? Am I in the right spot? Well, in the protection, where's the basket in relation to me? Where's the quarterback in relation to me? So there's a lot of things that carry over. That's going to tell you how to speed up and slow down. That, that, that's the art form that um, can be overlooked or not stressed enough. Rabluski has made the purpose of these spring practices clear as the team moves forward in their preparation for the coming season. I want to see these guys develop a confidence in themselves and the skills that they've learned so that they can do them consistently and they can do it with great effort and push their limits. I want to see how far these guys can push their limits as far as their strain, their effort, their finish of the game in each individual play. How hard you play the game, what you put on video is who you are. That wraps up our spring coverage of the Elon football team and their new coaching staff. Keep an eye out for more about Coach Skrowski and his crew this fall. And that brings us to today's history. On this day in Elon sports history, we take a look back at the Elon men's basketball program and the rookie season of Elon legend Jesse Branson. The 1962 season was supposed to feature the greatest 1-2 scoring punch in the history of Elon basketball with Jug Irvin and Ken Smith but due to injuries and eligibility issues, the duo faded out before the season. Yet Elon opened the season with seven consecutive victories led by rookie sensation Jesse Branson. Standing at six feet seven inches, the forward pulled down 459 rebounds on the season and broke the Elon freshman record for points with 438 and a 15.3 points per game average. The Fighting Christians would finish the year with a 22 and 10 overall record and Branson was selected to the all-conference team. And that's today's look into Elon Sports History. We have to take our second commercial break, but when we return, we'll reminisce on another phenomenal year of Elon Sports. There are currently over 350 Elon student athletes competing in 16 NCAA Division I sports. Stop. 
scholarships enable us to succeed not only on the field, but also in the classroom. It helps us in achieving our commitment. To live the maroon life. Your gifts have the power to take Phoenix Athletics to even greater heights while giving student athletes an outstanding education. What is living the maroon life? It's more than just the hustle and the sweat. It's more than just the pain and the frustration. It's more than just the triumph and the glory. The maroon life is you. Yes, you. You, the athlete, striving to be at your best day in and day out. You, the alumni who have been in the stands supporting Elon for years. You, the fans who stream into games hours before kickoff. And you, the little ones who will be the next generation of Phoenix fans. You are what drives Elon Athletics. And you are the reason we do what we do. There is so much history and tradition behind our maroon. Conference titles, all American, and national championships. But there is so much history and tradition yet to be made. So join us. Live the maroon life. And now back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on ESPN2. Welcome back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on your ESPN2 local sports break. Now, the answer to today's trivia. Earlier we asked, which athletic conference did Elon become a charter member of in 1930? The answer, the North State Conference. Since then, Elon has been a member of the South Atlantic Conference, Big South Conference and Southern Conference. On July 1st, Elon will move once again to the Colonial Athletic Association. This year was another great year for Elon Athletics that saw great plays and conference championships. Let's take a look back on the year that was. bench for Kelsey Harris the shot is up and that one will go home that's a thousand for Kelsey Harris
Houston fights for the rebound. Then comes up Christian Gutman. Number. The 2013-2014 year was another great year, and the 2014-2015 athletic year looks to be just as good. And that's our show for today. If you missed anything or want to watch it again, check us out on YouTube on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Elon Phoenix Weekly. You can also watch us on Time Warner Cable, channel 1083, to watch us on demand. Also be sure to visit elonphoenix.com. You'll never miss another touchdown, home run, point, or goal, Zora. On behalf of our producers and crew here at the show, we hope you continue to have a spectacular weekend. For the Elon Phoenix Weekly, I'm David Perel. And I'm Zora Stevenson. See you next fall.